In a recent revelation, an esteemed quantum physicist, Deep Prasad, who holds the position of CEO at Reactive Q, an organization specializing in quantum technology, shared a captivating and thought-provoking account on the popular social media platform, X, also known as Twitter. This intriguing narrative quickly gained traction and attracted significant attention due to the nature of its content. Prasad, who is not only an industrial engineer but also a distinguished physicist, embarked upon a detailed and lengthy exposition, meticulously describing a remarkable encounter he had with three enigmatic entities that left him astounded and deeply perplexed. Exploring the depths of this narrative, we find ourselves venturing into an unfathomable realm where the boundaries of our understanding are tested. Dr. Prasad said the following, It's Thanksgiving, and this is going to be a rather complicated post. It's also objectively not a good idea for me to write it, given every scientist has a target on their back in the UFO community, and given that I'm still a tech CEO. Near the beginning of 2019, February 1st, I had the most absurd, world-changing experience of my life. It happened in broad daylight at 9.40 in the morning in my home. More specific details will be for another time when I have a better safety net and can expand more. But to put it simply, I was paralyzed against my will, could not move, and saw three entities. These entities projected hundreds of thousands of sentences and paragraphs in a language that looked like Japanese and Egyptian hieroglyphics. I was terrified that I could barely move and was in complete disbelief at what was happening. I'd go back and forth between, convincing myself that I was having some sort of seizure or had fallen unconscious and that there was no way this was happening, to downright fear, realizing that it all felt more real than reality. I was scared that I couldn't move and was not in control of the situation, yet could think perfectly straight. At the same time, I was trying to make sense of the symbols. It was incredibly frustrating that I couldn't understand or translate them. The sentences and paragraphs would keep flipping rapidly, and the only English word I saw, at least three times, was the word DNA. This means that whoever or whatever was doing this, even if it's my brain, clearly understood English, but was choosing not to use it for everything. The image of my room would disappear when I raised my head a little, but it was hard to do that, and I would feel extremely nauseous. When it disappeared, I realized I was no longer in my room but somewhere else. When I would put my head back down, the image of my room would come back on again and the symbols were back again. I decided to stop fighting what was happening and for some reason no longer felt fear, but total fascination. The fear feeling would come back every now and then, but by this point, I was observing everything that was going on. The color of their suits, their size, their mannerisms, and the feeling that my mood was being rapidly cycled. After a certain point, one of them jumped on top of me and slowly walked towards my head. Right before it did this, it was on the ground near my TV, and displaying these beautiful golden holograms in the middle of its suit, these golden sparkles would jump around it too. Once it was on me, it walked towards me so slowly and cautiously, and I felt like I was being treated like an animal. I felt this weird light hitting the top of my head, and suddenly I got hit with the most blissful euphoric feeling I have ever felt. I will try my best to describe it. It felt like the universe was sentient and aware of my existence. The feeling was of warmth and nostalgia. It was like a reminder that space is teeming with life and that we're all related to each other by virtue of existing. I used the word oneness, which meant nothing to me before. After a few minutes of experiencing this, I got knocked out or lost consciousness and woke up instantly. Not a minute had gone by since the experience started. I was heaving and looking around completely shocked at what just happened. I couldn't believe no time had passed. I still didn't think what had happened could be authentic, but I question it less today than I did when it first happened. This all happened around an interesting time in my life. I had spent roughly three months studying unidentified objects, which is why I doubted the experience since I was biased. I was debating whether to delete all my tweets on the subject, because I was starting to think it was all one big scam, and I was disgruntled with the lack of hard evidence. This pushed me over the edge and made me double down on my obsession. I decided I needed to find more people who had these experiences, so I got in contact with the Toronto CE5 group. I booked a ticket and would meet Hal and Lou Elizondo the next month. I needed to know who these people were, what was going on, 
and if I had officially gone crazy. My life got weirder days after this experience. First of all, another thing that had happened a few weeks before this was someone passed away who was in my circle. We were not that close, but I looked up to him and related to him. Finding out about his passing had me traumatized, and it was affecting my work. Yet after the experience, I realized that feeling of oneness had not gone away. It was impossible to feel fear, and I literally could not feel fear no matter how hard I tried. I felt love for everyone, and it was very hard to make me mad. When I did, it wouldn't last very long and sizzle out fast. I was objectively the better version of myself. My beliefs in God changed almost instantly too. I went from an atheist to being spiritual. I started having dreams of seeing the inside of some of the UAPs we so commonly hear about. Mostly saucers and orbs, and some of my dream characters spoke only through telepathy. I had never in my life dreamed such things until this year. I'd experience impossible electrical anomalies two weeks after it happened, and I started feeling unnerved because I felt I had lost my free will to an extent. I didn't like that this newfound fearlessness, unconditional love and so on were not coming from me. I considered getting an MRI done to see what parts of my brain were rewired. It was unnatural, but extremely good and liberating. If the whole world experienced this state of mind I was in, we would level up overnight. I am convinced all the hate, fear and anger would disappear overnight from our society. After a couple of weeks, this feeling and state of mind dwindled down until I was back to my normal self again. Sometimes I wish I could go back to the way things were those first two weeks after the experience. I had my first sighting just weeks after this, and have had four in total since, two of which I have recorded. So, what do you make of this interesting story? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.